Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on six simple strategies for MSMEs. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. Before we start today's agenda, let me introduce all of you to HoHo -Ho Trainings, that is Hop On Hop Off Training by United SMEs, sponsored by Sinosoft, for, especially for SME fraternity. Tomorrow we have a training on social media marketing at 3 p.m. To attend this session, you can register yourself from the website www.unitedsmes.in. Uh, let me start with today's agenda. It's a very unique webinar concept specially designed for MSME owners and IT professionals. Today's session is focused on ITM, that is internal threat mitigation versus UTM, that is unified threat management and giving practical ITM solutions. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinosoft Technologies. He has over 18 years of experience expertise in IT industry, is known as Seasons Technology Stalwart, an inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an invent investor, and most importantly, a go-to guy for all the MSMEs. In this session, you will have insights on MSME, specific perspective, explanation and strategy for ITM, six simple strategies to ensure ITM. If you have questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in question and answer tab in the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the questions at the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you ask, want to ask any question in the end of the session, you may raise your hand and we will activate your microphone to ask the question. And, I, and this is a request, please fill the survey form, which you will get when the session ends. Uh, Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Yeah, thank you Prasanna uh, for a generous uh, introduction and uh, good afternoon to all of you. I see a good number of attendees and few of them are uh, repeat attendees also. So as Prasanna mentioned, uh, we are going to organize this uh, particular session and uh, this particular session is actually unique in a way. So today we are not going to have any demonstrations. We are not going to use any technical jargons, you know. So if you have uh, seen our invitation, uh, you know, it is uh, very well and clearly mentioned that it is a no jargon promise webinar. So today I am not going to use any jargons. Uh, I'm going to explain everything in layman terms. At least I'm going to try to do that. Also, uh, coming to the agenda of today's webinar, uh, we have uh, found this topic very interesting because uh, most of the times uh, uh, SME owners, you know, they are the expert of their field. Uh, of course, they are engineers, they are technical people, uh, they are postgraduates, but they are not so conversant with uh, information technology. And many a times they uh, come across certain words, uh, especially cybersecurity related words, and they find it difficult to understand. And sometimes uh, when we are not able to understand something, it worries more than uh, what we understand. So we thought that it is important and essential uh, to organize such a webinar where we will not use any jargons. We will explain everything in a very, very layman term. So today's webinar is uh, uh, divided in three parts. The first of all, we will understand cybersecurity in a layman term. What do we mean by cybersecurity? And uh, first of all, we will understand what is, what is covered in cybersecurity. And when we talk about cybersecurity, what should we think about? And cybersecurity for a large enterprise and cybersecurity for a small enterprise is different you know it is a different ball game which i am going to explain today so when we think about cybersecurity with a large organization in mind our thinking approach has to be different and when we are talking about or thinking about cybersecurity uh, for a small and medium enterprise in mind uh, it would be it would be different. It would be it would not be same as a large enterprise. It would not do justice to um, you know the protection from cyber uh, frauds for an SME if we have the same approach. So I'm going to explain to what extent we should worry about it. I'm going to explain uh, logically 
that why uh, uh, cyber security is important for MSMEs and what part of cyber security is important and to what an extent it is important. So that is the first part. In second part, we will uh, explain certain examples of cyber frauds. We will explain certain instances which we should be uh, conscious about, we should be uh, aware about, and uh, if we are aware about it and if we know what to do in such a situation, uh, we are not the victim of cyber fraud. So that is what we are going to explain. We are also going to explain certain thumb rules also in that second part of our webinar. And the third part is uh, what they call my signature concept and that, that I call it as a we are safe strategy, we are safe strategy. So I will explain what is that we are safe strategy that is called uh, those six simple strategies to protect any small and medium enterprise, for, uh, you know, with a cybersecurity perspective. And rule 23, I'm going to explain rule 23, which will help most of the SME owners attending this particular uh, uh, webinar or most of the IT professionals planning IT investment for SMEs. Uh, it will be very helpful for them in validating whether they are over investing or under investing or whether they are over spending or under spending on IT expenses. So these are the three things uh, which are covered in this particular webinar. And again, I repeat, it is going to be uh, my promise that I'm not going to use jargons. Uh, at the end of the webinar, if you have any question, uh, please uh, uh, raise your hand and we will talk about it or you can put your question in question answer session also. So before we start this webinar, let me understand uh, the composition of all the attendees, you know, uh, uh, you know, so let, let me know uh, which type of roles, responsibilities you are taking care of in your organization. And that's how I would be, you know, uh, more aware about the composition of all the attendees and I can, um, you know, adapt my, uh, uh, this webinar content, you know, accordingly. So Prasanna, will you please launch the poll first and then we'll start the webinar. Yeah, so uh, results are out. We are seeing that 55% um, of the attendees are representing a small and medium enterprise. 32% uh, are representing IT system integrator or IT service provider uh, to MSMEs or to large enterprises. And 14% are students, freelancers or IT professionals. So the audience is highly rele relevant to the subject of this particular webinar and uh, uh, what takeaway you can have from uh, this particular webinar is for the people who are representing SMEs can validate whether they over invested, under invested. Uh, IT system integrators can uh, have a look at our approach, how cybersecurity for, for MSME is handled and how cybersecurity for a large enterprise is handled. And uh, for students, freelancers, and IT professionals, definitely it is going to be a good knowledge sharing. So let us start with the next, uh, uh, the first part of this particular uh, uh, webinar. So I will just close this particular uh, poll. So first of all, uh, we'll understand why cybersecurity is so 
important suddenly you know why the cyber security is so important for msmes you know uh, it is like one fine morning you wake up and you uh, and the world has changed and this has happened with msmes in last uh, a few years so let us understand why uh, why it is so important so you will agree with me that cyber security is related to it infrastructure it systems or overall it adoption now most of the small and medium enterprises we can think about are either service providers to a large enterprise or suppliers to a large enterprise or they are exporters so when an sme is a service provider to large enterprise or a supplier to a large enterprise all the systems all the quality standards um, are also extended on the suppliers on the vendors large enterprises have their own vendor development programs in which they want their vendors or suppliers or service providers to adopt certain standard practices so those who are suppliers to large enterprise or uh, you know so service providers to large enterprise are competing on global standards you know because they have to keep up their sophistication level of their it infrastructure at a global standards similarly when uh, an sme is an exporter it is even more serious it is even more required uh, that they have to compete on the global standards so indian smes are competing on global standards so they are vulnerable to cyber frauds they are wonder vulnerable to cyber security because they are adopting information technology to be able to compete on global standards for them adoption of information technology is not a choice for them it is a compulsion you know uh, if they want to be globally competitive they have to adopt information technology if they don't adopt information technology probably they are uncompetitive and this mandatory adoption of information technology has made them dependent on digital assets if we compare 20 years back an sme they would have large drawing boards on which people are uh, drawing uh, you know on the board and then there were ammonia prints and they were rolling those ammonia prints in the uh, containers and they were giving now it is all autodesk products or 3d products um, that particular large drawing board is replaced by um, a simple uh, computer system and that is how it has happened everywhere uh, earlier we had papers uh, now it is all digitization so we can talk uh, we can we can very easily understand that uh, dependence on digital assets means most of the smes intellectual assets like designs drawings documents spreadsheets bids proposals accounting data hr data customer data all this data is now transformed from physical documents or physical papers to digital so they are unprecedentedly dependent on digital assets and when they are dependent on digital assets whatever can harm those digital assets can be a threat and cyber security threat is all about that any cyber fraud or any cyber security breach will harm those digital assets and that's the reason we need to understand that for sme cyber security is very very important and it will make sure that whether they can continue the business or they cannot continue the business it will uh, decide whether they are competitive or not competitive um, and that will depend on how they are handling cyber security so coming to the next part of this particular um, uh, presentation we have understood that cyber security is now very important now we have to understand what aspects of cyber security are important for um, smes and to what extent they are important so for that we are presenting some analysis for all of you uh, this is very interesting analysis it is slightly complex to understand but i am going to explain that so whenever um, there is an organization which is planning its cyber security for example so we have taken four types of organizations in this uh, particular screen the one 
uh, is this one, which is consumers, communities, social networks like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, such social networks or maybe Aadhaar portal or maybe uh, our uh, 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 vaccine vaccination portal or our Arogya Setu kind of networks, you know. Another type of enterprises are very large enterprises or government organizations, you know, like uh, NSCBSC listed companies or large PSUs. So a third type of enterprise we have visualized these old generation SMEs, you know, old generation SMEs who are not adopt, who have not adopted technology yet. And last is our type of enterprises. They are globally um, competing and in order to be able to compete globally, they have to adopt information technology. So now for these four types of organizations, we have tried to understand what is the availability of talent to provide for cybersecurity? You know, if I want to protect my organization for cybersecurity, I need talent and tools to protect my organization from cyber for cybersecurity. So when we talk about this kind of companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, or um, government organizations which are online available and they are ex accepting a lot of data online. They have talent availability and resource deployment for cybersecurity it is always very high. You know, they are very, very, um, um, uh, they are very, very large organizations. Uh, they have access to talent which can protect them on cybersecurity perspective. So they have a high talent availability in case they want to provide for, in case they want to provide for uh, cybersecurity. The same is the fact for large enterprise and government also. So when we talk about large enterprise government, they have all resources, money to hire uh, the best talent of cybersecurity to buy the best cybersecurity tools. So they also have high on this particular matrix on the high side, consumer communities and social networks and large enterprises and government are there who have ample abundance of talent and resources to protect them from cyber security, cyber, cyber frauds. Now, old generation SMEs, you know, they do not have access to such talent and they do not have such resources. So they are low on availability of resources and talent and the SMEs like us are also low on availability of talent and tools or resources to buy, you know, cybersecurity solutions. So uh, when we are focusing here, uh, our kind of organization does not have access to extraordinary talent, does not have access to unlimited resources to protect themselves with a cybersecurity perspective. Now coming to the horizontal axis, it is about the risk and financial impact of cybercrime. In case any of these enterprises are victim of any cyber fraud or of any cyber crime, what would be the risk and financial impact on them? So when we talk about consumer, community, social networks, it would be low because it would be consumer who would be affected and most of these uh, uh, larger uh, networks have very good cybersecurity provisions. So when there is an attack, it will have very little impact. They would immediately come to know about it and they would immediately uh, you know, take, uh, uh, re uh, take reactive actions and uh, they will make sure that risk and financial impact of cyber crime would be minimal. So for them, because they have high resource availability, because they have high resource availability, uh, their uh, uh, impact and risk of cyber fraud is low, is low, which is here. Now, it is different when we talk about large enterprise or government. Sometimes, if government or large enterprise are victim of cyber fraud or cyber crime, the risk and financial impact would be very, very high. You know, uh, there would be a fraud like we have seen the, uh, two years ago, uh, Yes Bank um, had, uh, you know, uh, that fraud and that was worth 110 crore 
uh, rupees. Um, so all these things are, uh, you know, very, very high. So for, so these large government enterprises are lying in high availability of talent and resource as well as high risk and impact of the cyber crime. When we talk about old generation MSME, though they do not have talent availability, they are also low on risk and financial impact because they, are, they cannot be the victim of cyber fraud because they have everything on paper yet. They have not adopted information technology. But when we talk about our SME fraternity, that impact is definitely high. So here it is very important to understand that SMEs do not have access to abundance of talent and resources to protect themselves with a cybersecurity perspective. But if they are the victim, the impact, risk, and financial um, consequences would be very high. We uh, read in newspaper that certain organization lost one crore rupees because of some bank account fraud or something like that. So we need to understand that for SME, they do not have access to talent, but they are vulnerable to very high uh, risk and financial impact of cybercrime. Now we will uh, go to next uh, part. It is also another analysis. Now let's say this was from the organization's point of view. Okay. Now let us take the point of view of the hacker. You know, let's say if somebody is a hacker, you know, uh, he would, and let's say he's very smartest of smarts, you know, he's very smart guy. Then what will be his decision making or decision making process to decide whom he would or she would target? So let's say if somebody is a hacker and he wants to target an organization, okay, uh, to hack. So what will be his criteria? Then his criteria would be what goodies or juice he's getting after successful hacking attempt. So what he's going to get, that would be one factor to decide whom he want to target. And another factor is criminal effort to commit the cyber crime means what would be the amount of efforts on his part to be able to successfully hack someone? You know, so um, if I am supposed to, if I want to, if I plan to hack, hack some uh, organization, which would be that organization whom I will target? I will first find out the organization which has a lot of goodies or a lot of juice to offer in terms of data breach. And I would also see that if that organization is too tough to hack, I would rather go to another organization which is relatively less tough to hack. So efforts to commit cyber crime and goodies from committing cyber crime would be the deciding factor that who will the hackers uh, would you know target. So goodies versus effort. So now the same organizations, if a hacker is targeting someone, I would say, uh, the goodies would be very large, you know, like a Facebook, if it is breached or, uh, you know, Facebook, if it is breached, then goodies would be very, very large, you know, because uh, it is going to be very high. Okay. Uh, at the same time, um, uh, it will be very easy to hack in them because um, they are the consumers. Consumers make mistake, you know, like many people keep their mobile number as their Facebook password and in their Facebook profile, their mobile number is displayed. So hackers do not have to make a lot of efforts to hack them out. Okay. So goodies are high and uh, efforts are low. So these are the people who can be hacked, you know, who could be the best and most uh, common target or soft targets for um, hackers. On the other side, large enterprises, Goodies are high. Yes, um, um, if if I if somebody hacks into SBI's credit card data, goodies are high. At the same time, efforts are also very high because these are the enterprises. Uh, they are not used by the consumers. You know, these are the enterprises uh, whose IT is in the able hands of IT professionals. So, for a hacker to uh, get those very large amount of goodies from large or government enterprise, they will also have to invest in a lot of efforts. Third is ignorant SME. You know, the SME who has not done anything, who does not do anything for a hacker, a hacker would not get anything after hacking an SME, correct? You know, at the same time, it would be very low effort. So it would be low and low. 
and proactive SME, the SME who understands cyber security, the SME who provides little for that particular cyber security, for them, the hacker will not have much of the goodies or juice to get. At the same time, because they are proactive, hacker will have to put in more efforts. So the first slide was telling us that SMEs do not have access to the IT talent and SMEs, uh, 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 you know, they, the impact of the cyber crime is high on SME. Okay. On the other hand, this is a positive news that if you are a little proactive SME, you know, you are making that amount of efforts required to hack you know, on a higher side. And that is how hacker would, there are all the chances that hacker would skip you and he would better concentrate on uh, this kind of uh, organizations. So now you, uh, now I want to actually convey that this is establishing that when we talk about uh, approach, an approach of cybersecurity for large enterprise and an approach of cybersecurity for a small organization, it has to be different. It has to be very different. So the large enterprises have to deploy a lot of talent. The large enterprises have to uh, take a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, tools to protect them. At the same time, because there is no juice or goodies of successful hacking from a small enterprise, hackers are not going to put in a lot of efforts beyond a level. And if SME is a little proactive, they will be skipped by the hackers and they will be spared by the hackers. So when we talk about the defense strategy for a large enterprise, how it has to be. So it has to be like this. It has to be professional, professionally done. It has to be professional person it has to be with all the tools. But defense strategy for the SME is not like that. You know, SME does not have access to such professional talent. SMEs cannot afford uh, such tools. So for their defense strategy, I always believe that they need to be like that. You know, they need to make sure that they are proactive, they are little um, proactive, and that is increasing the level of efforts to commit, you know, for hacking them. And by all means, the hackers would spare them because they don't want to spend a lot of efforts for a proactive SME to hack in and because they know that there are no goodies or uh, worth, worth that particular effort. So this is something which is very important for all of us to understand that the defense strategy for a large enterprise will be different from defense strategy for a uh, SME. And now we are going to focus on this type of defense strategy. Okay. So we are going to focus on this type of defense strategy. So before I uh, uh, go to the next part and explain the defense strategy and the examples of cyber fraud, I would request Prasanna to uh, launch the poll, please. So here we are <clears throat> with the poll results. 96% of the attendees agree that cybersecurity for SME is not the same as cybersecurity for large enterprises. Correct. So uh, uh, we need to have different strategy and what that different strategy could be. Now we'll see in our next part of this particular webinar.
so first of all let us understand what is the it usage in any organization so once we understand what is the it usage in any organization we would know what kind of threats are there so it is about finding out the targets cyber crime targets in our own organization so when we talk about digital assets it is all about data so all your data your designs drawings everything is what we generate after using information technology after using the software tools computers internet everything then another cyber crime target could be our communication system which is email system so that could also be a cyber crime target so our data could be cyber crime target our email system could be cyber crime target and we also use internet as a resource you know we have to use internet as a resource we make online payment we pay our taxes online we research on internet we develop business on internet so we have to use internet and when you use internet we can also be targeted as a cyber crime target while using internet connectivity we might need internet uh, uh, of static ip on static ip to make sure that our work from home users connect to our data so uh, internet connectivity can also be a cyber crime target so our data our email system and our internet connectivity could be the cyber crime target now let us understand how it can be exploited so how your data can be exploited so your data means your digital assets and their erp data account data design drawing cost sheet contracts customer data hr data and what not so the data has two types of cyber crime threat one is the external threat and the another one is internal threat the external threat is by the means of ransomware and internal threat is uh, you know by external threat could be ransomware or malware so normally ransomware and malware when they infect your systems they will encrypt all your digital assets all your data they will encrypt and then they will ask for money if you want to recover that particular data so this is an external threat you know it is mostly done by the autobots uh, put uh, autobots floated by the hackers on the internet network okay so this is external threat now there is an internal threat of cyber crime also on in uh, on data which is manipulation so let's say an employee is dissatisfied and he manipulates all the data so manipulation is something which is also a cyber crime you know uh, if i am working somewhere and i just uh, i just manipulate all the data or i just uh, deform all the data Uh, i might just go in the word file and just make changes haphazardly and just save it it is called manipulation so that could be a form of cyber crime possibility another is deletion of data you know somebody deletes the data accidentally or intentionally if it is done intentionally then it amounts to cyber crime so cyber crime on data can happen in the form of manipulation and deletion and the leakage is also a third type of uh, uh you know a cyber crime possibility on data like there could be for competitive purpose um, a user leaks the data to competitor or maybe user takes that data and misuses that data for committing some further cyber fraud so the leakage so manipulation deletion and leakage is also something you know uh, which is a possible possible cyber crime on data so when we talk about external threat it is about ransomware malware virus infection and when it is internal threat it would be manipulation deletion and leakage here i would like to make a statement that large enterprises have to worry about both both of this but smes have to worry about only this they are okay if we they are proactive so i will explain what level of proactiveness can really do away with external threat and what kind of internal threats one should uh, make sure that uh, uh, they are very well taken care of in the organization so for sme the focus is on the internal threat and for large enterprise the focus is external as well as internal threat now let us understand how emails 
can be misused or uh, can be uh, you know used for cyber crime so external threat is identity theft we'll understand what this is and ransomware backdoor so identity theft is something where uh, let's say my email id is vishal at signersop.in and uh, you know my email account is hacked and somebody impersonating as vishal at signersop.in contacts my customers or employees or accounts department and get some favor or get some um, you know kind of uh, uh, money you know because the or the person on the other side would uh, think that it is vishal whom he or she knows and they will actually do it so that is called identity theft and another is ransomware backdoor many a times uh, email attachments have infected ransomware backdoor entry and that is where email system can be used for cyber crime and it could be by identity theft or by ransomware backdoor and internal threat email can also be used as an internal threat and that is leakage of the data you know i can just attach some files or i can just send some files by blind carbon copy to someone else um and nobody would know i have done this so that is also a form of cyber crime i have done what i am not supposed to do and if it is that then it is internal threat and that is cyber crime through email system so now we'll understand identity theft part so many a times we get this kind of emails basically uh, like we get netflix and then you say restart your membership then you click on that then exactly looking a uh, netflix kind of uh, uh, website would be there on which you might pay um, from your credit card and then you don't get anything similarly sometimes you get an urgent message from let's say uh, labor department or from uh, uh, epf department or esic department and they they want to you know make sure that you act on it and then you enter your username and password to log on to that that is registered on hackers website and then they can in, in turn use that particular username and password and then they can very easily take your uh, identity similarly uh, it could be some tax return related so these are all the examples you know your bank of america account has been blocked so why don't you log in you log in you put in your username and password and they know it uh, on their website and then they just uh, you know carry on with the fraud so these are the examples of the email system you know these are all actual emails you know these are the examples of the email system uh, which can be misused to commit the cyber fraud and a level of proactiveness is required so these are another examples where you know a email goes from ceo that why don't you transfer this much amount to this party i just uh, struck a deal and we have to buy this material whatever so these are the examples just i'm putting these slides for few seconds so that you can just uh, have a look at it so these are the examples of fraud emails now how internet phishing works you know so now internet can also be one of the uh, very uh, easy and common way of committing cyber fraud you know so many a times uh, it is because of phishing you know it is external threat is by phishing phishing means a look alike website um, uh, of your bank or of your uh, uh, your email account would be published to you and when you enter your credentials those credentials are stolen and that's it internet can also be used uh, you know to uh, give backdoor entry to the ransomware sometimes you have very lucrative file or photograph to download you download it then ransomware is also there as a internal threat our own users can leak the data on internet so again uh, for email or internet for smes you know if they are slightly proactive you know they will not be the victim of identity theft kind of uh, email frauds at the same time they have to make sure that their users are not using emails or internet uh, for leaking their data because that is also a, stand, uh, a cyber fraud so again i am coming to the same point that large enterprise has to take care of internal as well as external threat and small enterprise has to be proactive for external threats and should be focusing on internal threat 
to make sure that it is not the victim of cyber crime. So now we will understand uh, this practically and I will give you a small tip, you know, so that you are never a victim of uh, a cyber crime. And this is a real time example. I have opened this particular website, Bank of India. And if you see, it was it happened on 12th uh, February, 2018. If you see, it is a screenshot and you can see here, it, I have taken this screenshot on at 6.37 PM on 12th February, 2018. On that particular day, uh, when we uh, most of the uh, most of us actually uh, Google for going to any website, like if I want to go to Bank of India website, uh, we Google it. So when we Google it, uh, at that time some hackers has play had placed you know this kind of fraudulent website which exactly looked like Bank of India original website, and uh, <clears throat> once we open that particular website, it would lead us to username and password. Okay username and password page where we used to enter our username and passwords. Now, this is the page which I have uh, again screenshot. Okay. Now, if you see, uh, I will magnify this particular part, you know, URL part, and then I'll tell you the, what is the formula. So if I magnify, you see here, it is bankofindia.starconnectcbsi.com dash whatever, whatever, whatever. So this is actually not a right URL, absolutely no. And this is a phishing URL. Now, how you or your users in the company would know about it? So I have developed a simple tip for that. You can apply that and you can find out whether it is a phishing uh, thing or not. So we'll see that. So now, first, uh, first of all, let us understand which would be the right URL. So this is the right URL, starconnectcbs.bankofindia.com. Uh, here you see bankofindia.starconnectcbs.com. So here, this is a right URL. And how we find out whether this is a right URL and whether we should have uh, used that URL to enter our credentials. So let us see that. So whenever you are opening any website, from the left side to right means from left to right this way find the third slash okay so this is one this is two and this is third slash, third slash so from left to right find the third slash so from this to this to this uh, first second and third slash okay find out the third slash once you find out the third slash from right to tap, from, from right to left, means from this part to this part, find the first dot. So here, this is the first point. This is the first dot, dot, okay, first dot. If your website is .co or .gov or .in, you can move to next dot also, okay. So just, just before, this particular first dot, if it is your bank's name, then it is an authenticated URL. If it is not, it would not be. Now we'll check that again. This was a wrong one. So which is the third slash? This is first, this is second, and this is third slash. Which is the first dot? This is the first dot. And what is exactly before that first dot? It is starconnectcbsi.com, which is not my bank's website. So it is a wrong. Now we will go here, uh, first, second, third. What is the first dot? It is here and my Bank of India name is there. So Bank of India is my right side. So it is, so if we train our users to do this way, um, how to find out the uh, uh, website which is genuine and which is not a fished website. In that case, we can be very proactive and we can make sure that we are not the victim of this kind of fraud. So here, <clears throat> this is something which I have explained that, uh, you know, we by becoming slightly proactive on email front, on uh, website front, our users can be very well um, aware about, um, you know, uh, the uh, right and wrong, and then they will not do wrong things, okay. On the other hand, we have to make sure that uh, our users are not internal threat to us in terms of data leakage or accidental or intentional deletion. Now, 
before I, so this is about my explanation, you know, about uh, what we want to uh, find out when uh, we want to know what kind of, whether it is a cyber fraud or not. So uh, that is where I have told that uh, element of proactiveness will um, make the hackers keep or spare you. And he will find that, you know, this is more uh, difficult to uh, crack. So let me move to somebody else who is softer. So now this is about um, understanding of what is wrong, what is right, how to find out what is wrong and what is right. And this is how we can be more proactive. Now we are moving to the last part of this particular webinar, which is the we are safe six different strategies to make sure that we are able to manage our internal threat mitigation program. Internal threat mitigation program means how we can make sure that users cannot really misuse our infrastructure um, to leak the data or to accidentally or intentionally delete the data. So we will see that we are safe strategy and then we will see um, something else, which is we call it rule 23 to validate whether you have over invested or under invested in your IT infrastructure, whether you are overspending or underspending on your IT expenses. So before I start that part, you know, I request Prasanna to launch the poll, please. Yeah, so 94% uh, of the attendees agree that SMEs are more vulnerable to internal threats like data leakage or data theft by the users. 6% uh, do not agree. Uh, I, I believe that yes, uh, there is no nothing like more or less, but if it is a proactive SME, you know, if it is a proactive SME who has provided certain things which we are going to see in our we are safe strategy, if, we, if they have done we are safe, I think um, for them, they are more vulnerable to internal threats than external threats, because if they follow that we are safe strategy, mostly they are very well protected from uh, external threat. And we will see how. So these were the poll results. Yeah, now we'll move to the next part of it. So now uh, we will uh, see this we are safe strategy. So see most of the SMEs require to access their network from outside or static IP only for its own users. It is not like bank where they need to give access to their network to their customers or it is not like a stock broker who has to give access to his customers uh, access of his network and applications to a, a customer you know it is not like a portal where uh, you know india mart where it has to give its data access to its customers smes access the data uh, especially in work from home situation only by the uh, known users. If, let's say if an SME has 50 users or 25 users, we know that only those 25 people would be accessing their data from outside. So if the first point of this first strategy of this we are safe uh, you know, model is VPN. If 
you are using if you are using any use case you have any use case to access your data from outside over static ip always use vpn never use free remote access software like ami team viewer like that never use that and use vpn over static ip and for using the vpn over static ip you do not need to buy very expensive firewalls you can get a good 6000 to 10000 rupees router which is a good vpn router and you can configure your static ip on that particular router you can make it a vpn server that router you can make it vpn server and um uh, you can install the vpn client in your user system who are going to access your data from outside and you can very well allow them to work from home or work from outside or remotely so this is the first strategy if you are extending your i'm i'm talking about how you overcome um and become proactive against the external threats so as a sme it is not your requirement to allow unknown people to get into your network just like a bank or just like a portal you know that who is supposed to enter your network and just to eliminate that factor of unknown you know you just install vpn router and install vpn client to your user system so that is the first thing which i highly recommend and that will make sure that hackers will find it difficult to hack in your network another is router and rule table once you have that router or a firewall you know uh, invest in a low cost configurable router and block all ports except ssl vpn port nothing else is open on your router so any connection which is happening to your router will be through ssl vpn port only and all other ports are blocked most of the times when hackers start hacking any network they run a port scan and they to try to find out that in your network what are the ports open from outside to inside network and when you have blocked all those ports on your routers uh, router and put your bandwidth on that particular router with static ip they will find that most of your ports are closed and whichever port is open which is vpn port it accepts connection only on ssl secured socket layer they will spare you they will skip you and they will move to somebody else whose ports are open and whose network is open the third element of this we are safe strategy is s which is standard email system do not use any non standard email system use standard email systems like g suite or office 365 kind of email system do not rely on you know a uh, small time email hosting provider to save few thousand rupees always go for a standard email system why because these are the people who provide email services to million and billions of the users okay and when they are doing it when there is any threat related to backdoor ransomware attachment or uh, any phishing attack or any identity theft attack they are the first people these service providers are the first to know about it and then they train their systems such that their customers are not affected and if you are their customers you are their customer you know you will also not be affected so you have to have a very standard email system don't go for non standard email systems unsecured email systems so it is we are safe vrs v for vpn r for router and rule table and s for standard email system a for antivirus you know i i have see, still seen many people you know who use their computer systems um, without antivirus don't do that at all no way you know you should have antivirus on all your computers if you have it you are very well protected from known ransomware and that is how known backdoor will also also be very well resisted by your antivirus and you will be protected f for forgo piracy forgo xp and 7 i see so many smes who are in love with windows 7 who are in love with xp don't do that now windows 11 is there windows 10 is already 
supported by Microsoft. So go for Windows 10 or Windows 11. Don't use cracks, trials kind of software. Only use genuine software. If you have to spend money on that, spend money on that. Otherwise, uh, you know, what do you spend on your uh, um, data recovery would be far higher than what would have, you would have spent on the good, genuine software. And E for employee policy. Uh, have a very strong employment agreement against the data leakage. This is about handling the internal threat. So if you have made the employee agree on paper that he cannot leak your data, he has to keep your um, things you know, uh, confidential. He will not really dare, most of them would not. And train your employees against phishing and identity theft, just like I had shown you a small hack, you know, how you can determine whether it is a phishing website or not. So train your people so that they are proactive. And when they are proactive, uh, you will be less vulnerable. And never use administrator passwords uh, to do everything and anything. You know, I have seen many people, you know, they just use administrator password for doing anything on their IT systems. Don't do that. You know, you have usernames, you, you have user level privileges and keep your passwords safe, you know, keep your passwords complex. Mm -hmm. Uh, many a times I see admin123 is a very common password. You know, my name at the red something is a very common password. Don't do that. If you are proactive enough with VPN, with um, router and routing table, with um, a standard email system, with antivirus, with genuine software, with strong employee policy, with aware and knowledgeable employees, and with this kind of practices like complex passwords for the administrators and users, you will be that tough nut for a hacker to crack. And if you are tough nut, he will just keep you or spare you. And that is how your cybersecurity provisions will not really uh, make a hole in your pocket. At the same time, you'll be very well protected. So this is about the six strategies for SMEs to mitigate cybersecurity risk. Now we are moving to the last agenda of this particular webinar which is about the rule of 23. How do you validate whether you have over-invested or under-invested? How you validate whether you are overspending or underspending on your IT expenses? So this is called rule 23. If we want to evaluate your one-time investment, what should be your one-time investment? So it is very, very simple and believe me, it works really well. So let's say you are an SME and your payroll is for 25 users. And let's say your average salary is 30,000 rupees. In that case, your 7,50,000 rupees, 7,50,000 rupees is your payroll per month. The rule of 23 is over a five years horizon, you should not be spending more than two times and less than three times, sorry, you should not be spending less than two times and more than three times of your monthly payroll. So if your monthly payroll is seven and a half lakhs of rupees, you should not have spent less than 15 lakhs and more than 21 lakhs or 22 lakhs, 50,000 rupees on anything and everything of your IT. It could be your ERP, it could be your license software, it could be your hardware, computers, monitor, printer, network, anything, the capex you have done. So if it is a 25 user, your spend should be anywhere between 15 lakhs of rupees to 21 lakhs of rupees over a five years horizon. So just check your tally or your account system in last five years, how much is in your fixed assets in terms of your computers, in terms of your software licenses, in terms of your network wires and whatnot, hardware, switches, whatnot. If it is between two to three times of your monthly payroll, you have not overspent, you have not underspent. If it is not, then you need to look at it. Now let us see what is your recurring expense? What should be your recurring expense? So your recurring expense is what you pay for your antivirus, what you pay for your internet bandwidth, what you pay for your AMC of your computers, your subscriptions, your IT resource salary, you know, the salary you pay to your IT resource. 
that should not be more than 2% to 3% of your monthly payroll. So again, if your monthly payroll is 7 lakh 50,000 rupees, 7 lakh uh, 50,000 rupees, whatever is its 2%, it is 15,000 rupees per month. And whatever is its uh, 3% is 22,500 rupees per person, not per person, per month. Uh, so 15,000 per month or 22,500 rupees per month should be your monthly expense on everything, your internet, antivirus, AMC, subscription. Maybe for 25 users, you do not need a dedicated IT resource, you know. So here you would determine and find out when you will really require a dedicated IT resource also by this particular rule. And what is your return on investment? So once you are optimizing your investment by this rule 23, once you're optimizing your IT expenses um, by this rule 23, you will have the best return on investment for the five years. Normally IT assets are invested for five years. So this is the rule of 23, which I wanted to explain to all of you. Um, I request Prasanna to launch the poll and then we'll open the session for the question answers. So here we see that 100% uh, of the attendees agree that we are safe strategies and rule 23 is useful and doable. I'm so glad to know about it. Um, you know, uh, it is real uh, happiness I am experiencing that whatever I have suggested you have found it useful. Uh, and that is uh, making my time spent on this worthwhile and your time spent on this worthwhile. Uh, so uh, now it's question answer time. Uh, I will be taking the questions. So the first question is from Mr. Mayu. Uh, what about MS Defender as antivirus other than service providers like McAfee Symantec? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayu, MS Defender is a very good uh, antivirus. And if you are using it and you are updating it regularly, uh, you really do not need other uh, antiviruses. Yes, you need other antiviruses in case you want to uh, control your endpoints for USB port and uh, or you want to encrypt your data or uh, there are other facilities in other antiviruses but MS uh, Defender is absolutely fine. Uh, Mr. Rohit, uh, uh, yeah very good session. Thank you Mr. Rohit. Will you share this deck to us? Uh, yes, we are going to circulate the recording of this entire uh, uh, webinar and you will get the link soon. Uh, uh, Prasanna will send it across. Yeah, any other questions? Um, yeah, Mr. Mayur, yeah, you're welcome, Mr. Mayur. Yeah, I think uh, somebody has typed the question in chat. Uh, it is about some business inquiry. So Prasanna, can you please help Mr. Uh, Jaffer to, you know, uh, for his question, you know, offline, in an offline way, please. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Yeah, any other questions? Uh, we have slightly overshot this session, but uh, no problem. We can uh, have it more than for more three, four minutes and take two, three questions, no problem. Yeah, so by the time you are deliberating your questions, uh, as Prasanna uh, had introduced all of you to United SMEs, I request all of you to take benefit of uh, United SMEs. It is complimentary. Uh, it is a training on a lot of important topics for your team members. 
you can circulate it with your uh, professional circle also uh, we are sponsoring these uh, uh, we are sponsoring these uh, uh, trainings for our sme fraternity as a uh, sense of reciprocation yeah mr mayur how to make we are safe for the organization any product see there are uh, when you have we are safe so for vpn you can go for a good cisco uh, rv42 router which cost 10000 rupees um, for uh, and in that you have you can have routing tables also uh, standard email system we recommend g suite or o365 whichever fits your budget uh, antivirus we you can go for defender in case you need more functionalities you can go for mcafee or symantec um and yes uh, this is all about we are safe if f is for uh, uh, you know uh, i think uh, you know there is no product for that it is all about uh, the practice uh, you can also evaluate various uh, you know advanced level uh, applications and products uh, which can actually do this we are safe you know uh, automatically or in a more uh, comprehensive and integrated way Yeah, so Prasanna, I think we uh, conclude today's session. Over to you. Thank you, sir, uh, for such a wonderful and knowledgeable session. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. We appreciate you being here. Hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation. Uh, kindly fill the survey form, which you will get at the end of the session, to give us your valuable feedback. On behalf of Sinosoft, I thank you again for joining. Yeah, by the time we just uh, conclude, uh, there is one thing uh, called what what courses or study you suggest, you know? Yeah, you can, uh, if, it is, if it is an IT professional, you have a lot of certifications you can go for. Uh, Mr. Chakravarti, yeah, you're welcome, sir. Uh, um, yeah, Mr. Chandra Prakash, uh, thanks for the session. We'll secure it. Endpoint security is the right product for over 200 user complex area. Yes, I think Securite is a good product and uh, you can very well look into it, uh, you know, uh, in comparison with McAfee also. Um, nowadays, McAfee has also uh, offered a lot of features, but it depends on your uh, uh, on your requirements and what specific uh, area you are uh, targeting and what objectives you want to achieve. So what you can say do is you can send an email to Prasanna with all your requirements. Uh, they will uh, give you some consultative uh, advice also. Uh, Synersop does not deal in Securite or any other antivirus product. It has its own product called Blackbox, which is my background. Uh, so, but that does not that is not an antivirus. Blackbox is uh, you know an complementary complement product to antivirus. So, antivirus is required wherever Blackbox is implemented. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you.